Hey, hey everyone, welcome back to POA for you. It's Leroy again, and today I'm going to talk about financial ratios. In particular, today's installment would uh, focus on profitability ratio. This is at the request of Elijah, and I hope it benefits you. For the rest of you, hope it helps you some way or another as well. So let's get right into it. There are three types of ratios tested in all levels, profitability, liquidity, and efficiency. Uh, profitability, like the name suggests, will tell us how profitable the business is, especially as compared to the business uh, historical trends or compared to uh, the same types of business within the same industry. Right? So one measure of profitability in terms of ratios is gross profit margins. And this is found usually in or profitability ratios, the, the inputs are found usually in the statement of financial performance. And let's take a look at it more in detail, shall we? So four formulas of four types of profitability ratios tested in all levels. And let's take a look at those and what they mean. Anytime you see, so the first one, gross profit margin, we discussed briefly earlier, and we see one profit margin. And you may be confused, what's the difference between number one and number three? Um, number one would be gross profits, if you look at your statement of financial performance, there's always a gross profit line uh, that comes after cost of sales and that represents the profits derived from directly selling your inventory or, or profits, direct profits derived from just selling your inventory. And the profit margins would include other costs as well. So it's not only inventory costs that you take into account, it's also uh, wages and salaries, rental costs, and it's usually the last line of your statement of financial performance. So that's the two difference. Now, so the, the word margin, if, if you look at this, right, how to remember the formula, gross profit margins, the gross profit therefore will be the numerator and margins will always refer to net sales revenues. So the margins will therefore be the gross profit uh, denominator, which is the net sales revenues. And therefore the formula is gross profit divided by net sales revenues. Now, similarly for profit margins, the numerator will be profits for the year. The denominator margins will refer to net sales revenue and therefore it is profit for the year divided by net sales revenue. And to get a percentage, because these ratios are expressed, profitability ratios are always expressed in percentages, you have to multiply by 100 to get a percentage like 40%, 50%, 60%, 20%, etc. Now, the next thing is cost uh, markup on cost. Markup on cost, the, uh, the denominator, like the last, uh, when we talk about profit margins, the last word will always give us a hint of what the denominator is. And markup on cost, the hint is cost of sales. And the, the numerator would just be gross profits. So it's very similar to part one, right? Gross profit margins is such, just that, you know, the perspective is different. Uh, this is telling us from the cost base, how much profits are we making from the cost of the inventory itself? So for example, if you bought a, a, a book for $10 and you sell it for $15, then you are talking about a gross profit of $5 divided by $10. So your markup is 50%. But if you look at this from a margins point of view, then your gross profit of $5 has to divide by $15 because that's how much you sold your books for and that will be 33%. So it's a different perspective. Usually in the commercial world, gross profit margins is used more often than markup on cost. Uh, return on equity is telling us from the profit of the year, uh, how much is that compared to the equity in the business and equity represents uh, what the business has, uh, what the shareholders has contributed to the business, including the historical profits that has been accumulated over the years that has been left in the business. Okay, so those are the theories of this formulas and stuff like that. It's always good to see it in practice. So I have prepared something to show you guys in practice and let's take a look at it now. So in this sheet, you would see uh, something quite familiar, right? This is a statement of uh, financial position, actually. statement of financial per performance, I beg your pardon. Okay, or the income statement in the old terminology. Uh, and this would usually have sales revenue, less sales returns, less cost of sales. And this is where your gross profit line is. 
okay and then you have other income less all the indirect expenses and then you have profit for the year so the first up if you want to calculate your gross profit margins then you are essentially taking your gross profits divided by your net sales revenue not the sales revenues in the first line because that's before uh, lasting sales returns you have to take the one that is after taking into account, account sales returns and this is telling you it's 40 percent now when you look at any of these ratios right you, if you look at it just on its own it doesn't really mean anything you have to compare it across years and that's why i put two years here uh, to give you a flavor of where the gross profit margin is headed um, from a direction point of view now of course if the gross profit margin is always increasing then that is better because today in 2019 out of one dollar of sales that this company makes it's giving you 40 cents of gross profit and the next year uh, 2020 every dollar of net sales that this company makes is giving you 41.7 cents and that's what this, these percentages mean right uh, and if some companies even compare themselves with industry peers to say that hey I'm doing 40% what's my what's my competitor doing if my competitor is doing 50% then I want to know how then I want to get I want to improve myself and get better in the in, in the industry and be more competitive but that's uh, we can talk a little more about that in a bit now the next ratio that we have here is uh, markup on cost. Markup on cost here, uh, sixty-six point seven. You take the gross profit, like the uh, formula suggests, divided by the cost, and you would expect the markup on cost percentage to be higher because the numerate, the denominator is always going to be smaller than the um, gross profit margin denominator because cost of sales is always smaller than the net sales revenue usually that case right uh because that's how you make profits you sell at a higher price versus the cost of your products that you sell um the next up uh profit margins i'm gonna move my face over here uh profit margins it's profits for the year divided by sales revenues so it is the final profit here and divided by the net sales revenues and here you would see this has increased quite a bit as well and uh, that's usually a good sign that the company is making profit uh, more and more profits as the year goes by and if you look at it over three years or even more years if this trend is persisting then this improvement is sustainable the last um uh, ratio here is return on equity profit for the year divided by average equity and average equity you know it's usually the ac the beginning equity in your syllabus the, the outline has said beginning equity plus ending equity divided by two and that's the average equity as simple right so uh in here i just put the average equity as hundred and twenty thousand, uh and the return therefore is uh you know of course improving as well because the numerator has gone up the absolute numerator has gone up right now so you understand the formula for this profitability and how you find it in the statement of financial performance it, it's kind of important to ask yourself a few questions that could be tested in exams or it's just good to know as well so would let's say a omission in rent expense affect gross profit margin so if you look at rent expense it's here right so if i omitted it Right. If I take it out, do you think it would affect your gross profit margin of 40% here? No, it wouldn't because rent is below the gross profit line. So if I take this, uh, if I take this out, so if I take this gross rent out, then the profits for the year would increase, but not the gross profit. Right. So if I'm going to put it back, look at the gross profits for the year that would reduce because my expenses, other expenses will increase it will not affect my gross profit margin. So you need to know that because that's a common uh, question that usually comes up. So the next question, what could have impacted profitability trends? Or in another way of looking at the question is how do you influence or improve the profitability trends of the company, right? Um, so if you look at profitability trends, you always look at, you know, the first two that come to mind is profit margins and gross profit uh, margins. And so what can influence this number, the profit number or the gross profit number is things that you want to think about. And first and foremost, my, uh, profit margins 
of course, if you can optimize the cost structure, uh, especially the indirect cost, uh, for example, rental, you're paying 10,000 this year and because everyone's working from home, so you don't need a, such a big office renting space. Um, so you move into a smaller office space and that could bring this cost down and therefore the cost that you save would drop into the profits for the year. And that's how you uh, improve profitability. Uh, also, if you increase your selling price uh, without significant impact on the unit sold. And that's usually the case for uh, products that have very strong branding uh, that even though prices are, are going up, consumers would still buy. Uh, and that would generally improve the net sales revenues and the gross profit margins and also the profit margins. The next thing that uh, uh, could improve your profitability, gross profits and profit margin is if your inventory cost, which is usually reflected here, uh, cost of sales, uh, as cost of sales when you sell the inventory, um, if your inventory cost is lower, uh, through either driving a cheaper cost of production. So if you are manufacturing something and you find efficiencies in the way you're manufacturing it such that you get it cheaper or because the, 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 the input stuff, input uh, pro, uh, materials that you buy, uh, you manage to source it cheaper, then it would drive down your inventory cost. Then this savings would drop into higher profitability in terms of gross profits and profits for the year as well. Okay, so coming back to this, uh, four profitability ratios for you to uh, remember. Now, there's uh, some external resources that I'll recommend you take a look if you have time. Uh, Investopedia, uh, just Google profitability ratio and go to this, uh, select this investopedia.com uh, search result. And in there, there are videos or they have articles for you. And this is an, ex an extract from them uh, where they tell you that, hey, uh, profitability is a ratio is essentially telling you measuring the, how well the company earns profits from its sales, which is what we went through. Um, and these ratios actually uh, indicate how you know efficient the company generates profits. So vis-a-vis -vis especially another similar company in the same industry or uh, as compared to the their, their own performance in the past. Uh, because it's the trend that you want to see, you know, especially for when you compare it uh, with historical results. And lastly, I think, uh, oh, yeah, we mentioned this as well. You know, you compare it to your own performance, you compare it to similar companies or industry average. Okay, so hopefully this has been helpful. If there's any questions, my email address is here or you can reach me at my channel. Uh, send write a comment there if you have any questions. But uh, hope this has been helpful for you guys. All right, take care for now.